this talk is going to cover mainly um, work we've done in the Paith project, the Blue Waters Paith project, where we've been collaborating with other application teams to improve the performance of their applications on Blue Waters. So first, some, some context um, in case people are not familiar with Charm++ or AMPI. So Charm++ is an object-oriented uh, parallel programming model based on migra migratable objects where you express um, the program in terms of objects and, their, and the interactions between these objects. So these objects um, can also can migrate between cores and nodes, uh, which is handled by, by the runtime. So one very important component is the adaptive runtime system, which has features like asynchronous message-driven execution, which allows like aut automatic overlap of communication computation. It also allows dynamic load balancing, optimization of communication, and fault tolerance, among other features. So we also have a Python version of Charm++, which is built on top of the C++ runtime. It has its own unique features, and it's very simple to use compared to Charm++. And then finally, uh, adaptive a MPI, which is known as AMPI, is basically an implementation of MPI on Charm++, which allows running al MPI applications on top of Charm++. So basically, in many cases, um, you can just run your, your MPI application with minimal changes or no changes. It depends on, on the use of global variables. I'll talk about a bit more about that. And what it allows is you can have multiple MPI ranks per process, which allows things like load balancing or it, uh, taking advantage of Champer Plus features like the overlap of communication and computation. So yeah, these are the main technology software we work on on our group. So the, yeah, I'm gonna pass. The next slide, so what we've been doing for the paid project, so our main goal is basically to improve resource utilization, sorry, utilization of application on Blue Waters. And this is basically th um, through two techniques. One is topology aware mapping of tasks to cores to improve the performance of communication. And the second one is load balancing, dynamic load balancing um, to minimize the CPU idle time. So we've been using these techniques on several applications. Um, some of them include Harm 3D, Harm 3D um, PSDNS, all of these applications mentioned here, Milk. And these are Charm++ applications. Of course, we've collaborated with these teams using both topology and load balancing techniques. So the outline of my talk is gonna, I'm going to talk mostly low, about load balancing. Uh, I'm going to do like a brief recap of our work for topology aware mapping. And then I'll focus on load balancing with Charm++, AMPI, and, and our recent developments. So for topology aware mapping, like I said, this is just going to be a brief recap since we've talked about this in, I think, the, the last two, two symposiums and the mini, mini tutorials. So there are slides and tutorials on this, but I'm also happy to talk about this offline. The idea of topology web mapping is placing MPI tasks, ranks, in, in your job allocation. So the scheduler gives you a, uh, an allocation, a, a set of nodes, but the, the MPI ranks have to be placed on, on those nodes. So and it has to be done in a way that reduces the latency and, and the network contention. So the ideal goal is to place the task in a way that the communication, that the load of network links is minimized. So this is an MP hard problem. And of course, we, so we can solve this with heuristics. And the basic idea is that we want to match the application communication graph to the actual machine topology. So the effect of this is going to be highly dependent on your application, on the job size, and the network topology. So on Blue Waters, Blue Waters has a 3D torus topology. And so it, topology aware mapping actually matters a lot on Blue Waters because there can be like a lot of, a lot of hops between two arbitrary processes on your job. So even though you might have high bandwidth be between two processes, but if, if, there, if the tasks are not placed correctly, you might have very long paths. And if you, ha if you have a large number of long paths in your job, th that leads to network contention. 
So actually placing ranks in a smart way can improve communication a lot, especially on large job, jobs. So we developed an automatic topology aware mapping tool, which is available on Blue Waters. Um, if you're interested, I would recommend re looking at the readme. And, but basically how it works is that first you do a profiling run using the, the automatic tool, which is going to obtain the communication graph of the application. And then in production runs, you run this, this tool. You, you basically load the module and run this program called Mapper, which takes as input the communication graph, which was obtained in the profiling run. That will generate a special mapping file. Then you just export this variable. And then when you, run the, when you launch the application inside the job, the system will map the MPI ranks according to the calculated mapping. So these are some of the speed ups we observe with different applications. So with Milk, we, we saw very large speed ups. This, of course, is with very with large job sizes, like maybe from 1,000 to 4,000 nodes. Because if your job sizes are very small, um, communication performance doesn't matter as much. So one important thing to observe here is that so the tool is good, especially if you have if the application makes a heavy use of point-to-point -point communication. But with if you if you have like a heavy use of collectives or a mix of collectives and point-to-point, -point, then things get trickier. So we still observed some good speeders like Qbox uses a lot of subgroup alt walls. But then other applications, the speed ups are not as large. So it's highly dependent, like I said, on the application and the communication patterns. But it's still worth 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 a try. So, okay, so for the rest of the talk, I'm gonna focus on load balancing. So many science applications can exhibit load ba load imbalance, where basically you have cores doing different amount of work, and what this means is that typically all, all the cores will have to wait for the slowest one. And this is particularly this is very inefficient, especially in, in large jobs, because this, uh, this will mean that you have a large amount of cores doing nothing. So this is um, a brief, well, a simple description of the load balancing problem. Like, assume you have a set of parallel tasks. Each task has a specific load. And you want to assign the task to two cores in your whole job allocation such that you want to minimize the maximum load of the processors. So of course, this assumes that you have more tasks than cores. If, and the, the performance improvement you're going to get, uh, this is going to depend on your application. But basically, it will be the max load without load balancing divided by the, uh, uh, the max load with, optim with optimal load balancing. So this is very, very application specific. But assume, but if you have like a ratio of two, then you could get a, an up to two x improvement. If the ratio is ten, you could get a, up to ten x improvement. So this problem um, is MP hard, but they're actually like very simple, greedy algorithms that can obtain very good solutions. But things get tricky in, in HPC because it's not just the algorithm to map the task to the course. There are, there are other things here. Like, for example, with very large jobs, you have like a huge amount of cores, huge amount of tasks. With strong scaling, your tasks are, are smaller. You want to compute them faster. But your load balancing problem is larger. So the main problem, the main issue here is the cost of load balancing. So you, if you want to do like frequent load balancing, you, you can't, the application can't be spending all the time doing load balancing. So one, some of the things that you have to do when load balancing is you have to collect stati statistics of the load of each object of the cores. You want to then calculate your task to core mapping. And then you have to actually migrate and place the tasks. So th this is the, 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 the actual, these are the actual challenges, uh, doing this with low cost. So before um, explaining how we're dealing with that. I'll just mention briefly how load balancing works with Charm++. So Charm++ can do this load balancing automatically in an essentially application transparent way. 
uh, it, it will balance load within and across nodes. So what it does, the runtime, it measures the load of objects. The objects are, are your parallel tasks based on your decomposition. It calculates a, a new assignment of these objects to cores and, and then migrates them. So like I said, the improvement you get with load balancing depends on the application. Like here, this is an example with the LeanMD code, which is a molecular dynamics mini app, which um, emulates the force calculation of NAMD. And here, well, as we can see with load balancing, we, we, we get very close, or well, practically it's the same as the ideal load balancing. And uh, almost, I think it's like almost a 2x improvement. And linear scaling. So, but what about the load balancing for non champlain trust applications? So we, we also spent effort in this project for applications that are not programmed in Charm++. Plus Plus. So one of these, the results was the load balancing library, which can be used by MPI applications, where we basically um, extracted a subset of algorithm of load balancing algorithms from Charm++. Plus Plus. And the application can use this to decide how to balance load. But of course, the application still has to measure the load and, and move it. So it's not ideal. An easier alternative is to use AMPI, which, like I said, you can just run your MPI application on top of Charm++. Plus. So if your application doesn't have global variables, it, it will directly run as is without any changes. If it has global variables, you can just tag them with a, I don't remember the exact declaration, but simple declaration. And what will happen is, so this is an example. This one is with Lulesh. So what you do when you run with AMPI is that you're set, you use m multiple ranks per process. We call them virtual ranks. So here, for example, we're running um, the application with eight ranks per process. So this is um, transparent to the application. This allows the Term plus plus runtime to move ranks among cores and nodes to balance load. So we see like there's an improvement with using load balancing. Actually, most of the improvement here is not because of load balancing. It's, it's probably because AMPL also allows, because you have m m multiple virtual ranks per process, the network inje injection is spread across the whole time step instead of waiting to, till the end of the time step to, for one rank to inject communication. Here you have eight ranks on one process. So the eight ranks are injecting throughout the time step. Also, one of our collaborators in the paid project was the Harm3D application. So we tested it with, in a, a scenario where there wasn't a lot of imbalance. So the they reported that the max possible speed up in this scenario would be 20%, and we just ran, running it on AMPI, we got 10% speed up. Um, and we didn't have time to explore further because, well, the project ended on their side. So now I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna describe the basic types of low balancing in Plus Plus. So, we have centralized load balancing where you have like a global view of all the objects and all the cores. And this is gonna give you the best load balancing because, well, like I said, you have a global view, but the problem is that it's higher cost. The algorithm has to process more objects. Then we have hierarchical where you organize the cores in a tree structure and you aggregate information. So you, you start losing information if you go to a hierarchical or distributed approach, but it's faster. So why would you like go from centralized to hierarchical? This, so it depends on the scale of your job. So we've, we've tried to do improvements across all of these three types of load balancing. So for example, for central load balancing, a good heuristic is the greedy one. It's very simple, but it's actually, it provides very good solutions, like it only has a, a, a 1.33 worst case approximation ratio, and in many cases, it's, it's actually finds solution very close to the optimal. It has a low time complexity, but the problem is, is that it can move objects everywhere, so it can 
mess up with your communication mapping. So we did an, a, a variant which is called greedy refine, where basically um, you go through the objects, which are sorted based on their load, but instead of assigning them always to the least loaded processor, so you you assign them to the current to their previous core if the load doesn't exceed a threshold. So this threshold you can initialize it to be the, the max load with the greedy algorithm or alpha times the average load, which is a lower bound on the optimal max load. So what we get is a solution that's very similar to greedy, but it limits the movement of objects. So this is good like if you want to preserve your communication, your mapping, the initial mapping of objects. And we get like a huge boost in performance, not, not just because, well, because of several factors. One is because we move less objects, we also did a faster implementation of the algorithm, and then because of several performance optimizations in, in the load balancing framework. Um, we also did another variant, which is topology aware, where it's basically the same algorithm, but you constrain where you can migrate objects. If you, in this case, we make we constrain them to migrate only to cores in the vicinity. So these are some results. So previously, where so this is, a, again, a centralized load balancing algorithm. This is a very large job, well, 1,000 node job with 200K objects. So previously, where if we wanted to do centralized load balancing with Greedy, the, each load balancing step would take like two seconds. Um, now it, it's just like 350 milliseconds. So we can use centralized load balancing with in larger jobs. And Let's see, so another important thing here is, so this is tensile-based code, so communication is important. So what we, the, top, the topo greedy find actually obtains better performance, and it's not because, it's not because it, it, lo it balances load faster, so it, it's actually because it preserves the communication mapping. So I'm just gonna go quickly, how, how much time do I have? Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll go quickly through this. So for hierarchical load balancing, so NAMD uses hierarchical load balancing. It also has its own custom topology aware load balancer. What we did was add um, topology aware trees for the hierarchy, and that achieved a 10% speed up. Also for distributed load balancers, we have a new load balancing strategy based on graph refinement where um, nodes exchange information only with neighbor nodes. So load balancing is done based on only on local, local information, so this is a very scalable strategy. And it also preserves topology aware mapping. So to conclude, um, yeah, like I said, so these are important techniques if you wanna do efficient resource utilization on Blue Waters. Um, also, lo load balancing that preserves the, ma the mapping is an efficient way to have the best of both worlds. What, what this means is um, if you want to so optimize for communication, that's very expensive. So that's something you only want to do at the beginning once or unfrequently. So doing load balancing that preserves that mapping is an efficient way to both load balance and have good com communication performance. And Finally, the load balancing framework allows for fast, scalable load balancing. Also, I wanted, I was gonna talk about heterogeneous load balancing, but I, I figured that I wouldn't have time. Um, this is, so this is gonna be our upcoming support in Charm++, probably version seven, where this is for heterogeneous nodes where you have CPUs and GPUs, so obviously we wanna balance load of all compute nodes all compute resources, including CPUs and GPUs. And yeah, finally, like I said, so AMPI is a way for MPI applications to benefit from these features. Um, so thank you. <laughs>